Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 71. 71! Daniel Tenisov? Tarasov? Tarasov? Yeah. Ten. Not gonna work here anymore? <laughs> Not gonna work here anymore? <laughs> there you That's go. That's it. Yeah, you, you say five games played? I'm running out of these guys, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, in his career. It is what it is. Anyway, uh, so this week, obviously, we talked a little bit about uh, the week in review already from episode 70, so it's kind of like the game in review, but we will <laughs> go ahead and review that for you. Uh, a little bit more about uh, Bob Boodner and uh, specifically of getting to Bokov as well. Right, and then we'll just look at the week ahead. we got some a lot of home games coming up, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll do a little fancy hockey update. Great. You ready to start the show? Ready. ready. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. So like we said, we kind of already talked about the uh, the other games in this week. What were you already laughing for? Gotta love dad jokes. Okay, well, hey, still hung up on that dad joke. It's actually right? a letter Kenny reference, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, we did uh, kind of reference those games already in episode number seventy. So uh, if you wanted to hear more about those, and you uh, just go back to seventy, you'll you'll catch what we're talking about there. And seventy was kind of a hybrid because it was a live, but also an episode because we did it, we shot it live. That's right. Yeah, so no, this one uh, a little, just a little different recorded, right. but that's fine. Uh, so uh, the the Predators game was kind of Pete DeBoer's undoing there, which is actually kind of funny because if you think about it, they were down two to one without Evander Kane in the third period. Yeah, they end up losing that one three to one with an empty net goal, and that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. You would think that it, it would be a bigger blowout game, but it could have been an overall picture of hey, we're going on this long road yeah. trip, and depending on how it does and how the team responds and mm -hmm. how they look overall. Uh, if they don't have X amount of points, we're going to let them go. And that maybe that was more that than just that one specific game. Right. Well, it sounded like uh, uh, Doug Wilson had made that decision on the flight home uh, from, from Nashville. So uh, after that had occurred, of course, Bob Bugner takes the reins as the head coach of the San Jose Sharks, along with Evgeny Nabokov, Roy Sommer, and Mike Ricci joining the staff as well. So um, a lot of things happened <laughs> kind of in a really quick uh, span there. And then yeah. right away, you turn around, you got to play against the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Again, that one, a 6-3 loss, though the Sharks seemed to play a little bit better defensively. 45 minutes of solid hockey, 15 minutes of who knows what was going <laughs> on. And uh, yeah, they end up losing 6-3 to in that I, one. Once again, we talked about this in the last episode, but uh, just briefly, that the Sharks should have won that game. They were up 3-2 to two after uh, the blast from Brendan the Dill. And, oh, man, he ripped that thing. <laughs> uh, you should go back and look at those highlights and then just stop the highlights because that's where that game should have ended and you should be <laughs> happy. But uh, <laughs> the Rangers came back and uh, Art Artemi, 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 Artemi Panarin, uh, he is a all-star, just an, an incredible hockey player, uh, made the Sharks look a little silly. Martin Jones did not have a strong game in that game. No. Um, I don't want to say he specifically lost that game, but he definitely didn't help them win that game. Um, and now we see Aaron Dell in that in the next game. Yeah, well, so, so the, the goals you're talking about, there are two of them that, that went in uh, kind of like short side, really, um, that he certainly could have had. Um, not a very good showing for Martin Jones there, but there were a couple other goals that I was reading uh, Kevin Kerr's, and we'll actually reference something from Kevin Kerr's uh, in an article. It'll be positive. This, to me, was a, uh, a little bit more of a negative spin on something that I was reading from him, though. Um, he was saying, basically, like there was a couple shots that uh, were definitely saveable, and I would 100% agree had he not been screened on uh, some of those goals. Two of them, not very high danger uh, areas, but uh, high danger in that he can't see the puck. So uh, the Rangers, hats off to them, doing the right thing, getting in the goalie's eyes. The Sharks not pushing them out, boxing them out against something we'll hear about a little bit later on the show and uh, them doing something right. But in this case, it, those goals go in because he can't see them. Uh, the Rangers do a good job getting in his eyes. So um, some goals you can fault them for, some goals you really can't. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, moving on from the Rangers' loss, uh, we have, uh, I guess, we want to talk about the, the press conference. Which was before the game. Yeah. But uh, we'll just go back and reference this. Uh, this is Bob Bugner's quote when, I think it was Kevin Kurz that actually asked this question, yes, right? Yes, he did. Uh, kind of what were the changes that he's going to bring to the system, if any, and what he thinks about the goaltending uh, since they have the worst, was it the five-on-five -five save percentage, I believe was the question, the right. specific question. The worst five-on-five -five save percentage in the league, how is he going to change that? So Bugner said, it's not just the goaltenders. Everybody's got to be better. There's some things that we're going to change in the system a little bit. We're going to adjust, but I think we've just got to take care of the high danger area a little more and give Jonesy and Deller more support. That's not saying it's not on them as well. Nabokov comes in, coming in is obviously a great voice for those guys. I think he's going to challenge both of those guys and give 
maybe a little different look to them. I think it's a team thing. I don't think it's a goalie thing, and we're going to look to tighten that up for sure. So, like, not to toot our own horn, but I will a little bit. I feel like this is something that we've been saying maybe all season. All season. Maybe even going into last year a little bit that things just need to tighten up a little bit more defensively. Not that the it's not all the goalies' fault. Yeah. And it's not all the team's fault. Right. We're not taking you know one or the other side. We're saying it's everybody combined. It's just not great. It's not all the goalies' fault. The goalies can be better, for sure. But I would rather play good, solid team defense around a, a goalie who's like an average goalie, even a below-average goalie, um, than have you know porous defense around the best goalie in the league. Because the best goalie in the league is still not going to stop every shot. If you can force that puck to the outside, uh, box them out, uh, keep them out of those high danger areas, a, a decent goaltender in this league would do a fairly decent job of, of making those saves. So um, that's kind of where what we've been saying the whole time, or at least I've been just you know preaching that like crazy. <laughs> I think we talked about it during the live. I said, you know, it's I get a lot of people who get on top of me for like defending Jones. We had one tonight. Yeah, uh, uh, somebody was saying that you guys need to stop defending the goalies, <laughs> and we're like, well, we're not completely defending the goalies. They they are definitely on the hook for a lot of these goals, but. Uh, having the worst save percentage five on five when they practically lead the league well their penalty kill is number one right. but if you look at the save percentage wise I'm sure it's either number one or number two it's up there that doesn't make sense like a team that can play that well defensively on the penalty kill and not translate that to five on five something's wrong with the system which is why Doug Wilson made the change and he even said as much in the press conference as well Doug Wilson himself. yeah yeah no so I, and like like I said I, it's I said this during the live. I feel like I may have misrepresented my stance. I don't. It's not like I really love Martin Jones, and I just <laughs> want I want everybody to get off his back. It's it's just when I when I played defense, I knew that I could say you know when I did uh, something wrong, and it was the, the puck goes in the net. The goalie could maybe have made the save, but I did not help him out whatsoever. Right? I, I should have done something different. I made a bad read, or I missed the puck, or whatever the, the case may have been, and that goal going in, though the goalie could have stopped it, is really on me. And I would always go back to my goalie and apologize. And so what, when I see these goals, and I go, well, but that one, like, it's, it's a cross creaser. How's he supposed to get, right? So it's not Jones. It would be Jones or Dell or Carey Price or Tuka Rat. Any goaltender in the league who has to deal with that, you're looking at your five-man unit in front of him saying, why aren't we shutting that down, right? right. So that's that's where I come from with all that stuff. So anyway, um, talking about team defense and boxing out and playing the game uh, safer, that's what one of the words that Aaron Dell used. We have a couple quotes uh, from both Mark Edward Vlasic and Aaron Dell. We're going to mm -hmm. go ahead and play those back-to-back -back right now. Basically what they're saying is um, this is the, the game that they won here, right? Against um, Vancouver. Against Vancouver. And kind of what went right uh, in that game and what they did well. And you'll notice that m the majority of things they're talking about are they played good defensively. So uh, here you are with those two quotes back-to-back. So last week, was this one a better defensive game you guys played in the last six, seven games or so? Yeah, we played better defensively. Uh, PK was good. Deller was good. Just those turnovers that created some on mad rushes, some great A chances, but it was a better effort. How were you seeing the puck out there tonight? Like you were anticipating some of their shots, uh, I don't know if you've been out there period. Yeah, I'm, I felt good. I felt uh, my reads were pretty on, so uh, I think that makes a, a big difference. And uh, I think the, the work with, uh, with Adam Frensley I did to, on the control really came into play in, in the last couple that I've played. So there you have them uh, both talking about uh, very defensive-minded things right there, right? So so boxing out, basically keeping guys out of that high danger, that area, that slot area, right? And then Dell referencing the word a safer game, right? Um, basically them playing defense first and allowing the offense to take care of itself, which, uh, again, this game was a 4-2 win, mm -hmm. kind of a weird 4-2 win, uh, two <laughs> empty net goals, go figure. Uh, but, you know, again, a two or fewer win, right? So when the Sharks lock it down, they play better in their own zone the offense does take care of itself and we've seen that we've seen that time and time again so um you know the other thing was with uh, i think it was uh, vlasic had said that you know he was he played really well dell did he was seeing pucks right mm -hmm. and i think it's very interesting that he specifically said he was seeing pucks because i feel like that was something they were working on in fact and we're about to talk about nabokov here but in in the practice that they ran right after the rangers game mm -hmm. they had 
this mannequin when I've got an image <laughs> I put these up on on our social accounts it was like Instagram and, and Twitter I believe um, so we put these images up and this this uh, this mannequin here is like nightmare fuel according to Kevin Curtis <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's like a child's face but it's like painted green or something yeah it's just really strange this is what they used uh, with the Barracuda actually and when that staff came over for the Sharks they ended up bringing the mannequin so with that Nabokov specifically because he was the goaltending coach at Barracuda before this. Correct? I wonder if he takes it home with him. I, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, one way or another, yes, it's it's basically Nabokov's tool right. to use. Yeah. So what he'll do is he'll throw this mannequin in front of the goaltender to make it, you know, not just uh, like a tripod. That's what the uh, Johan Hedberg was using mm -hmm. before, and he was using just a big thick tripod, and they had to shoot between the uh, the legs of the tripod. Now it's interesting with the tripod because that could also serve as a. Uh, Deflections. Maybe yeah. that's what the tripod was mainly for, not so much the blocking of the vision, but more deflections. Because the puck could deflect off of that and go in any direction with three different legs. Yeah, it, it could. I think w with the, the tripod, if it deflects, it's going to go wider than that. But regardless, with the with the mannequin, at least, it's the size of a yeah, player. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's more got, about the vision than deflections. Exactly. You're, you have to look past the legs and everything mm -hmm. else. And in fact, I've got a little bit of video we'll play here as well, uh, showing uh, Kevin LeBanc coming in, taking a shot. And you can see Jones has to kind of fight that one off. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, really interesting stuff with uh, Nabokov using that. Now, again, referencing that he was seeing the pucks the fact that they were using the mannequin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the the two goals that we just talked about where I thought maybe Kurz wasn't very generous on it, again, ones where he got in the, uh, they got in the goalie's eyes and he couldn't see it. It's amazing because as soon as that becomes an issue, it's the first thing that Bokov does is he says, okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's drill down on that now. It brings out the, the, the mannequin and they start going after it. So a uh, really good job uh, by Evgeny Nabokov kind of zeroing in on mm -hmm. the things that they need to work on right away, wasting no time uh, getting his goalies up to speed with what they need to learn and what they need to do better right. um, that they haven't been doing better. So a uh, really good job on him. And I had the uh, pleasure of, of going to the uh, the practice. Did you want to no. throw something in? No, okay, guys. Yeah, Go so I, I was at the practice. And, uh, you know, again, that's where I got that, some of that, that video and everything from. Um, and, you know, he's just very animated. I'll say that. Uh, Nabi is very, you get, it's almost, he wants to play. I'm telling you, he wants to throw the pads back on mm -hmm. and get back in the net. This guy is, uh, you could see when he's talking to Jones about, you know, the movement and, and he's, he's got himself set hard and he moves and he shuffles and everything else. And it's not the type of thing that you really saw out of, out of Johan Hedberg. Um, he was a little more soft spoken, I would say, not as, not nearly as animated. Nabi out there is, um, he's he's moving around. He, you could tell yeah. he wants some game action. You right. know, I think he's going to come out of retirement if he doesn't uh, stick with the coaching well, stuff. Well, funny enough, and you can go back and check this out, we interviewed Evgeny Nabokov yeah. about a year ago. I think it was in November. Episode because, 23. Right, episode 23. Go back and look at episode 23 or listen on, on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, and Mario makes an appearance, and I, however, was not there. <laughs> Paul had his disgusting mustache during November From last November. year, yeah. and I was MIA that day. It was during his uh, Hall of Fame induction into the San Jose Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, so go check that out, episode 23. Even yeah. though now we're on 71. That's crazy. Yeah. How uh, about that, huh? That's awesome. Jeez, what a long way. Right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, definitely check that one out because it was, it was a fun interview I got to do with them. And, of course, you get to revisit the mustache that you've seen uh, <laughs> just in this, the past month. And uh, I've gained from a year ago now. But right. uh, regardless, uh, yeah, so definitely uh, really promising stuff we're seeing out of Evgeny Nabokov getting out there, uh, making sure that, you know, if there's a problem, he's addressing it right away. Uh, again, really working um, really closely, really hands-on with the goaltender, specifically Martin Jones in this case. And that's kind of the nice thing because Dell's going to get the start now right. in, in the next game. Um, I don't know if we're going to reference that later or not, but it doesn't oh, matter. We're going to reference it now. It. The so. week ahead. We could go <laughs> jump right into the week ahead if you okay. want. Okay, well, that we can do that. And then uh, is the week ahead brought to you by La Villa's Italian Delicatessen in downtown Willow Glen. So they've got the uh, Chris combo. They've got the raviolis, of course. Uh, order ahead for Christmas. It may be too late. Who knows? It might be too late. Yeah, yeah. They are a busy little shop. And if you want to yeah. go in there, uh, you might want to call ahead. You know, for your your lunch and whatnot. But do uh, make sure you spend a little bit of time checking out all the memorabilia they have. Lots of cool stuff in there. So uh, again, this uh, little segment here brought to you by uh, La Villa's Delicatessen in downtown Willow Glen. We feed the league. Okay. So uh, what is it you want to talk about now? So let's say we have a week. The week ahead, looking right. ahead, uh, there's three home games, mm -hmm. and, at least in this week, and it is on Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tuesday game, and this we're going to reference this uh, to Bugner, his post game of Vancouver. Uh, he was talking about Aaron Dell specifically because he was asked about how he played, and also uh, he's going to be getting the next start. 
in the next game. Yeah, he said that uh, Aaron Dell was our best player that game, right. and you know this is gives us uh, an opportunity here. It's, he says it's an advantage for us, I believe, is the words he uses. That you know basically you get to uh, have Martin Jones uh, work with the Fanny Nabokov. In fact, yep. we'll just go ahead and play that clip for you right now. <laughs> yeah, Deller was uh, you know he was our best player and. Uh, um, he made some key saves at uh, key times and, uh, you know, really uh, um, it kept us in it when we were starting to take on water. And, uh, you know, and that's, you know, that's what a, a goalie does in a, in, a, in a win like that. It's, uh, um, you know, I like the way we played. Um, you know, we played with some poise. Second period we took on too much. But, uh, you know, I thought the third period we responded. Um, even though, you know, they, they were in our zone a little bit, we didn't, uh, we, we didn't have too many letdowns and so many breakdowns in the slot area. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I said it after last game. It's not. Uh, this is a competition, and uh, you know, both guys are good goalies. And um, you know, I think that uh, uh, Jonesy's going to get a chance here to work with Navi for a few days, which is uh, an advantage for us. I think. You know, I think uh, Deller goes in that next game, and, and uh, you know, Jonesy continues to work with Navi and uh, um, you know, get his game to where it needs to be. So Aaron Dell's going to be starting, and it's going to be interesting to see because he hasn't really strung together consecutive starts yet strong consecutive starts uh he's gotten a few chances and he hasn't really been able to do very well even not just this season i think in the last two seasons mm -hmm. um so it'll be interesting to see this was a question that we had in the live about you know after one game one really bad game by martin jones dumping him and having aaron dell take over as a starter i wouldn't go quite that far i would in fact i bet martin jones after you know they're gonna have a big break here uh, going over from yeah. Tuesday to Saturday. So Martin Jones is going to get a lot of work in with Nabokov. Um, I bet he bounces back strong. So we're going to see Dell for sure already, we already know, mm -hmm. in the next game. Um, and then there's a back-to-back. -back. So we're going to see Martin Jones, very, you know, almost guaranteed. Can't yeah. say guaranteed, but almost guaranteed in one of those games. Now, so Tuesday is against Arizona. This is an interesting game because Arizona is actually leading the Pacific Division right now. Yeah. So going back to my pretender contender, I thought Arizona was going to be a strong team vying for one of those spots. Only because they score by committee. They're not a team that has one, they're, you know, you can't shut down one line because they have four decent lines yeah. all the way through their lineup. So it's harder to just shut them down. Um, so that's kind of the way they are. A little bit boring. I think someone, I can't remember who it was. Somebody had mentioned they're boring hockey. Um, <laughs> and like, kind of like a slip of the tongue, like they shouldn't have said it. And then yeah. it became a big thing. And they're like, yeah, Arizona's boring hockey. And I think even uh, Bring Back Hockey made sure it's saying boring hockey. Nice. <laughs> kind of like one of those things. So Arizona's will be interesting. Um, it'll be great to get a win, obviously, uh, over Arizona. Now, we already beat them. When was that? A week ago? Two weeks ago, I mm. think. We actually played them or beat them in Arizona. Am I remembering that correctly? I think so. It was pretty recently. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're beatable. I mean, not to say that they're not. Yeah. I think the Sharks have a good chance, and they're better at home. So um, I'd expect two points out of this game. And I, I would love to see Aaron Dell put together another strong performance, kind of push Martin Jones, like, okay, now you really have to be on top of his game to come back mm -hmm. strong. Any thoughts on that I'm, game? I'm going to say that, so, so we just talked about Aaron Dell um, not being able to string games together. I'm going to predict that he doesn't necessarily stand on his head in this game, but that the puck's really not going to go in the net that much because I think the team defense is going to start really cranking and moving, right? Mm -hmm. I think the team defense is going to solidify just a little bit more, and I think this is the point that we've been trying to drive home is it doesn't really matter who you have in net. What really matters is the way that your team plays around them. Um, there should, uh, I, Again, I've been called this the goalie apologist. I, for me, it's, <laughs> it's less about the goaltender and more about the responsibilities of everyone around that goaltender. And I think they're going to tighten it down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And especially against a team like Arizona who's leading the division, it is a divisional opponent, first of all. And second, you're, they're at the, the top of the league, right. or top of the top division. Of the so you want, you want to, to knock these guys down a peg, right? So I think you're going to see the Sharks tighten it up just a little bit more as they continue to learn the tweaks that Bob Bugner wants to implement into their system. And I feel like whether Dell plays phenomenally or not, I think he's going to make a few big saves here and there. But I don't think he's going to need to make a ton of big saves. I think the Sharks are going to lock it down just a little bit more against Arizona. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Like you said, they've got decent lines. So there's not a whole lot that you know to, to fear. I and mean, there's Phil Kessel. Yeah. He's probably their 
one of their stronger ones. Uh, he, Keller's also woken up. He's yeah. been playing pretty well in the last couple weeks. Yeah. So if you can knock down their their bigger guys, the rest of them are kind of decent. Okay, I think we can handle that. Again, if they're playing good, strong defensive hockey, I think any of those guys on their team will be able to lock them out. So hopefully Aaron Dell doesn't really have to stand on his head. I'm looking for a win out of Arizona as well. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, after that game, again, a nice big break. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Martin Jones gets some, an opportunity to really work in with uh, Evgeny Bakov and work out some of those kinks, um, get his, uh, his screen game going yeah. because of the... Jeez, that mannequin is one ugly, <laughs> one ugly if, thing. If I remember correctly, going back two weeks, I guess, mm -hmm. I think this is the end of the 11 game. or I'm sorry, uh, was it seven games in 11 days or something? Yeah. Because it was almost... There's one back to back, and then it's every other day. Yeah. Then they get a five game or five day break, so they're not playing again until Saturday or four game four day break. Um, it'll be good for them to kind of rest their legs because they're kind of an older team. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of Jumbo and Patty. Um, <laughs> you probably get a spa day in there, right? Yeah. They'll probably get. I bet if they win on Tuesday, they'll probably get Wednesday off, just off, okay. no practice. Okay. Then they got Thursday and Friday to practice. That I mean, maybe some maybe it's an optional practice on. Wednesday. How about that? Okay. Then they got uh, then they got game day on Saturday. So Saturday against the Blues. I'm expecting that's going to be a tough game. The yeah. Blue, I mean, we know the Blues from last season. Not much has changed with the Blues. Not much personnel. Uh, yeah. Vladimir Tarasenko is out for pretty much the entire season. So that's a big gun that they're that missing. Helps. But um, other than that, they're pretty much the same team. They've been strong. They've been solid. But the Sharks will be coming off of a four day rest, which mm -hmm. would be good for them. So I'm expecting them to come out. Gun and hard. They should have the little tweaks to the system that Bugner wants to implement should be pretty much down by then. So I think we're going to see a very good defensive game by the Sharks against the Blues. Be energized, hopefully, come out of the jump, jump the gate, and uh, score some goals early. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I'm I'm a little less optimistic uh, <laughs> on, on that game uh, for obvious reasons. But you know, like you said, St. Louis Blues. Not much has changed. Now it's great. For us, not great for Vladimir, but great for us that we don't have to deal with Tarasenko. Um, but I still feel like the Blues are that kind of heavier team, and they can you know kind of push us around. Now, as much as I'd like to say, hey, it's great for us to play good team defense and box out and do all those things, guys like Eric Carlson maybe not the strongest fellows on the team, and I think maybe uh, he gets pushed around just a little bit inside of his own zone. And I think the St. Louis Blues. Are that bully team where uh, you, you think mm -hmm. you're gonna box me out? No, nah, you're probably not gonna. So uh, you know, again, for me, I think the St. Louis game that one's kind of up in the air. I think it's gonna be a good game, a good battle. I think the Sharks might come on on a short end. Yeah, of the second I mean, one thing that I th wouldn't be surprised to see are some fights in this game. Oh yeah, why? Because we saw in the last game against Vancouver, Vlasic was boxing out. Uh, what was his name? Blanking on his name. On Vancouver, bigger dude. Uh, I think he's playing Dallas. Uh, Tannen. No, I'm blanking on it. I don't know. It doesn't matter because we're a strike show. And we can say in the comments. Bobble other guys' names. It doesn't matter. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Vlasic dropped the gloves. Yeah. In the last couple of minutes of the game, I think he threw. I think he landed a punch or two in there, right? And no penalty call, nothing. But yep. stay out of our crease. I think that's going to be the new norm going forward. So anyone that comes in there uh, for St. Louis, I think yeah. they're going to. It's going to be tougher. So Carlson and Vlasic are usually paired up. Yeah. Not always, but it, they, they. He's kind of fiddling with it a little bit too and that kind of speaks to the uh, lack of toughness on that line where right. Vlasic's the guy dropping the gloves <laughs> like uh, I don't know if you really want to do that but uh, regardless yeah so um, a good uh, good break there uh, St. Louis I think it's going to be a tough game I think you're right the new norm for the Sharks is going to be don't get anywhere near my crease uh, and I think that's exactly what they needed we've seen yep. way too many times where guys are getting in those high danger areas and two weeks ago we were, or a week ago we were saying they're the number one word for the Sharks are soft yeah. Right? And now, hopefully, that's going to change. Yep. Not so much. So, right. after the St. Louis game, uh, win, lose, or draw, we are going to go and stay at home. Stay at We're home. playing against uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, you just talked about teams that you might drop the gloves with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think maybe this one's got uh, propensity to... Uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to have some fireworks in it. It's a Sunday, so there's probably not too many games on Sunday. I didn't look at the NHL schedule okay. overall, but uh, this is the... Is it the last game before the Christmas break? Yeah. So they're going to have another four or five days off mm -hmm. and be home at the holidays. They don't have to travel. It's not like they're coming back from anywhere. So I'm hoping the Sharks don't, you know, go in their mind, I'm on vacation already kind of <laughs> mode. Like, you know, last day of work before you leave for a two-week trip. All right. You're kind of like, yeah, work. Not going to happen, right? <laughs> Hopefully they don't have that mindset. Hopefully they have the mindset of, i got to put in some work 
because now I'm going to have some rest after this and get those points on the board. Yeah. So I'm expecting a strong game again, hopefully just running on adrenaline because they just played the night before, but having a couple of days off before that and a couple of days after that, mm -hmm. that should hopefully get them to work hard in that game. So I'm expecting that Jones is going to start the St. Louis game, and I think Dell, because it's a back-to-back, -back, mm -hmm. will end up getting the Vegas Golden Knights game, regardless of how Jones does. I don't think they play him back-to-back. What if Jones shuts out the Blues? I I think regardless of how because that game goes. Because it's a back-to-back? -back, I think, think because it's a back-to-back, -back, regardless of how that game goes, you're going to get Jones and then Dell. So it'll be interesting if Dell has a very strong game against Arizona, then you flip it. He plays St. Louis, and you play Jones against Vegas. That that might make more sense. Who knows? Which could be a scheduled loss for Jones, which would okay. be unfortunate. Okay. I don't know. We're just kind of speculating. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what Boogie's going to do? So yeah. So uh, the the Vegas game, I think that's another one of those ones that's going to be uh, very tough, just like the St. Louis game. Mm -hmm. uh, another one where you're not really sure how what the outcome is going to look like. So what do you think? <sighs> oh man, I think. I mean, I'd really like the Sharks to get two points out of this. Mm -hmm. Just because it's Vegas, I want to catch them in standings. This was obviously the best way to do it. Hopefully no overtime. Hopefully they get it in regulation. So six for six. Really? This week? Okay. Uh, so again, I'm a little less optimistic <laughs> than, than Aaron is. Uh, I'm going to say I'd be happy with, I'd be really happy with four. I'd be happy with four. Um, if we come out of there with two wins... Uh, it's it's a good uh, good games three four and five of a seven game homestand, so uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for four. Uh, I would love to have six. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just trying to be a little more realistic here. So I think we've turned the corner. We're getting six. Ooh, that fast, huh? Boogie, yes. baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, normally we would jump into the EASHL, but we're gonna do a week off, and uh, we'll skip past that one for this week. We'll be back with. Uh, the screenshots and video in episode number 72 so be looking yep. for that uh, if you have not subscribed by the way please hit that uh, button hit that bell so that you know when that comes out and you can go ahead and send us some of those clips because we're not really getting any from anybody else so uh, <laughs> that would just be great it's just our boring clips <laughs> <laughs> regardless we'll skip right past that and go into fantasy fantasy hockey okay here's a take a look at league one I'm starting to catch up now mm. I'm only a game and a half behind still in third place but it's one two and three are really close together mm -hmm. Um, this team is the one where I have, I think I, this is the team I have Martin Jones in goal and he's been killing me. So I, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. Just a bad week for me. He won't be it's, killing you for long, buddy. Well, it's not bad. It's not, the rest of my team's carrying uh -huh. the team, my, you know, my real fantasy fake team, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, but this league, I'm starting to catch up. And in fact, I played second place. I think it's Razor Teeth is his name, um, Razor Tooth. I, I just beat him, so I kind of caught up to him a little yeah. bit. He was in first place, so I bumped him to second. Nice. Uh, and then we'll take a look at the other league, and I'm still in first, but it's a lot closer now. And this is, injuries are catching up to me. So okay. I have Crosby, and I have Marner. Crosby on, on IR, and Marner's back now, and he's doing better. Okay. Uh, but I have, uh, and I have somebody else on IR, and I can't remember who it is now, because I'm not looking at it. <laughs> um, but I have two, two of my top guys on IR. Okay. So that's hurting me now, and it's starting to catch up, because guys are catching me. So, uh, still in first place in this league, but getting a lot closer. Very good. So that does it for fantasy. And uh, I guess the last thing to do here is just plug the merch. Because sure. we still are running our 25% off for the Cyber Monday. We decided to extend it. Uh, we had some folks that were interested. In fact, I think you've got a picture uh, of somebody who was watching our show and had a hat. Yep, it's actually Patrick Cabral. There you go. He won our hat, because this is an OG hat from our first <laughs> run before we actually had real hats. And uh, he won this, and he's a pilot, so he had it up in the cockpit and uh, was listening to our live as he was at SFO about to take off. Nice. So he was watching on his phone. Not flying while watching. <laughs> Before he's flying. Don't watch and fly, people. Right. <laughs> um, but, so yeah, if uh, that's the uh, the old school one. Uh, the hats that we are actually selling, again, everything in the store, hats, shirts, stickers, everything's 25% off. Uh, just use the uh, code that's on the, uh, the screen there. And it's at uh, thefinfactor.com. Just go ahead yep. and hit the support the show. Get over there because that is what you're doing. You're helping us keep the lights on, and we do appreciate all that. So anything else you want to go ahead and fire away out there? Uh, I think that's better. Okay. Well, that does it for episode number 71. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Please, again, make sure you check out those live shows because we had a really fun live uh, last time around here. And, uh, yeah, we're still we're, we're converting St. Louis fans. That guy, I'm <laughs> telling you, he's got a Blues logo. But that's going to change. Before the end of the season, we're going to flip him. I'm telling you. 
Got a good feeling about it. Regardless, for Super Producer Jason, I am Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.